Hello and good morning wherever you are. This morning here. Figured we hop out and make a video on this fine Saturday. I don't know when it's going to be released, but here we are at Better Tattooing in the garage. Today we're going to be talking about skin swelling, understanding skin stress, and how wounds heal. This is going to be a long video. <laughs> All right. Nope, that's over with. Uh, wound healing, especially like topical wound healing. These little minor ones where we're not being, you know, shot with a gun, stabbed with a knife, or having something awful happen inside of our body. Our skin, in and of itself, heals in a very unique way, especially when given a minor wound, which normally is what happens with tattooing. Some of us do that, at least. Some of us do not. Um, it goes through a very specific set stage and way of making sure that everything is just going to be healed up good, right? So there's three stages to wound healing and understanding each one of these, uh, specifically the first one, which is what we'll be going over in this video, is going to be the most important for you as a tattooer because understanding skin stress and the, the different visual things that you can identify when you're doing a tattoo can better help you understand where your client is at right, what their skin can take, and when you're pushing it too far. So, let's get into this. All right, step one of any wound, what happens the body starts to adapt is inflammation. It's gonna be followed up by the proliferation stage, creating, uh, and then the last one's gonna be remodeling. So, for us to start with talking about inflammation, we're thinking about how the body reacts when something initially hits and how it is going to go just kind of into a panic mode, right? It is inflaming the situation. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work or not anyways. Med people are going to be like, oh God. Um, it, it's causing a ruckus so that we know exactly what's going on. It's going to do a whole bunch of unique things so that the body can start the process to rebuild. And why it happens this way is because if we start getting into fixing and, and covering and getting all of that wound rebuilt, but there is still bad things inside the body that can cause us harm, we're trapping them in and increasing the chances of our body experiencing stress or infection or other negative things happening. And the skin is really smart. So it is going to do, I'm not like smart, but you understand like it's intelligent. No, it's not. Ooh. Um, it, it's going to react in a way that is going to try to produce something that we call homeostasis in science, right? It's where everything is just the way it should be. So let's break down each step of the inflammation so you can understand what's happening when you're doing tattoo. All right, step one in inflammation, we have a trigger. And in tattooing, what we have is a needle that is going into someone's skin and it's causing a wound, right? As this enters in, it's all of a sudden going to tell the body that there's something going on. The destruction of cells and neighboring cells that have been, you know, touched or moved or stressed or stretched or whatever else is going to start a cascade event. A cascade event is kind of like think about falling down a ladder. Certain things have to be hit along that way. It's just like the different rungs that are going to continue down a system, right? Which we're going to have our initial trigger starting here. And at the end here, we're going to have our healing. Now, if each one of those individual rungs is hit on the way down before you hit the bottom, right, then you're gonna eat, it's gonna send off the signal for the next stage to happen. So with this one, we have an initial strike or injury that's occurring and the body goes, oh no, there is injury. What's going to happen? This is the most robust aspect of, of the skin healing stage because it starts calling in literally everything that we're gonna see during the inflammatory phase uh, and, and starts it all moving there. I mean, there are very specific cells that may come in at a later time, but this is where the most energy is probably going to be expressed um, during the initial bit because this is when things will be able to get a foothold, right? Not only the things that live on the outside of our skin, but also on the inside. So a whole bunch of stuff, hormones and chemicals and other factors inside the body get released and they start signaling everything around it to be like, hey, there is something wrong here. The body in turn starts to send other things to that area, causing what we normally know as inflammation, right? We're gonna see swelling in the area come up. It's like blood and fluid kind of come to the area. And that's really good to see some of that because what it is doing is it's creating less space between certain things and more space between others so that various cells can come up and start to attack things in case they think it is, you know, a foreign particle or something that may cause damage to the body, like those killer cells that hold pigment, right? <clears throat> and we're gonna see this continue 
for about the first day, maybe 24 hours, where the body is still gonna be in a relatively inflamed state. Now, when we're doing a tattoo, because we don't tattoo people for 24 hours, what we're doing is we're starting with an initial test, right? When we do our first movement on the skin, if this is our first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna eyeball that area. We're gonna make a mental note when we're doing a tattoo, and we're gonna see how the body has reacted. And this is gonna be our check back continuously through the space. Hopefully, when you start, it is going to be in a place where you're not going to be touching it a whole lot until hopefully the end, uh, which used to have that thing when we do a tattoo, right? You always, if you're right-handed, you start from the bottom right and move to the top left, and then you color moving opposite coming down, uh, or vice versa if you are left-handed, right? If you are ambidextrous and you tattoo with two hands during tattooing, brava, I cannot do that. Um, but you just do it however you want, I guess. Mm, just try not to wipe off the stencil. Anyway, so that, that set point that we're gonna be creating when we first start the tattoo, <clears throat> what we're gonna be doing is seeing how the body reacts through time. Right, if we see massive inflammation right from the start, where the skin is raising a whole lot, where it gets red, where there's blood or exudate that's coming out of the space, there might be an underlying cause that we need to identify before we start doing any more of the tattooing as to why that, that is happening, right? Is the person very stressed? Are they suffering from long-term health issues? Did they get enough sleep? Have they eaten? Do they have other like chronic health conditions that they did not tell you about? Are they pregnant nursing lactating? Are they on their cycle? There is so many other things that can cause the body to kind of freak out. And so we want to identify what those things are because if that initial strike is already kind of ah, freaking out, <clears throat> you can imagine that three hours into a tattoo, the body is gonna be at a very, very, very just exhausted state if it can even deal with the stress and pain at all. So after the trigger, <clears throat> we're gonna see those things raise up, right? And if you see something that looks outside of the norm, ask questions. That's gonna be the easiest way to deal with that. On to step two. All right, step two in this process is gonna be the sealing of, uh, oh, I used the wrong color, uh, sealing of the wound, right? And when we start getting into our inflammation, what, what's gonna happen is our body is going to, well, we've got our needle that's come in, we'll put back up our skin model here. I don't know why I keep deleting it off here with my eraser, erasing it. Anyways, as the needle makes contact and our trigger has been sent, our body is now alerted that there's been a wound, right? So if there is an opening in here, the body's really gonna try to start sealing it off because we don't wanna have a bunch of things being able to get into the body. Now, depending on the depth of the wound, if we have something that is just kind of lightly brushed over top of the epidermis, the body is not gonna react the same as if you have something that is punctured into the, the like lower tissues, right? If we have a wound that is actually bypassed the entire part of the skin, we're gonna see a much different reaction than we will if something that's just topically applied. That's why you could scratch yourself and your body doesn't send up a bunch of blood and like <laughs> start to create scabs over top of it. You know what I mean? So the depth of where we're actually putting the tattoo is going to be a good, um, it'll give us a good visual as to why certain amounts of inflammation are gonna happen, right? The deeper that you go and the more trauma that you impart on the body when you're doing a tattoo, the more it will swell. And when we go over a large area and we've done it consistently to that area, you can have massive amounts of swelling that are gonna happen. And those are people can get you know, heavy bruising or it almost looks like there's a softball stuffed underneath their skin if they've got something on the outside of their bicep. So we wanna watch when we're going uh, through our tattoo and how deep we're doing it because it's gonna mitigate how hard that the body has to work to replace and fix and stop uh, any of the cells that have been broken and also stop anything that's gonna be able to come into it, right? So first thing we notice is if we're doing something with, with the tattoo uh, needle and, and we're seeing bits of blood come up like actual blood, there's a difference between blood and exudate, right? Exudate, uh, exudate is like blood plasma, uh, plasma and other stuff. Uh, and it makes like an ambery color where we can see it almost looks kind of like pussy, but it's not gonna be milky. Um, that is gonna be normal, right? Because that's your body sending a whole bunch of really cool cells up to try and trying to block it, right? But if you're seeing blood come out and blood, the big difference between blood and exudate is it's like red, it's blood. <laughs> It's usually gonna say, it, tell you how you're interacting with that person's skin 
and where your, your needles are at. Um, sometimes you get people who have the pillow skin, and if you tattoo, you know what I'm talking about. It's almost like tattooing a marshmallow. They have different vascularization or collections of those type of vessels related to uh, locations inside the dermis that may be a bit more shallow, meaning that you're being finding them a little bit higher up collectively where they're uh, aggregated in the skin, so you're hitting them and you're seeing blood come out. There's a bunch of stuff we can do to try and uh, change that, but we'll get to that in another video. Um, well, other people may actually have it a, li a bit lower, right? So if you're going in and you're seeing blood after the first pass, a pass, and you've already asked all your questions that you need to ask to try and get a decent medical history, it could just be that the construction of their skin is like that, right? And if we're seeing blood come up, that is bad because now we're having the body forcibly come through and try to fix larger structures that are being damaged in the skin and they're going to be sending a ton of things called platelets to that area to do it, right? We will see platelets in, in any type of wound realistically that stems from a tattooing, uh, from tattooing, but we're going to see greater quantities of them if we're seeing active blood being spilled out of the body because it's going to have to deal with the breaks in vascularization that have occurred that is dumping blood into the area and that is a through path into the body so the body freaks out quite a bit over that so that's going to be our next thing right we're going to see the body start to seal it off it's going to use either exudate whoop let's put that e on there or blood mixed with exudate to come up and seal it off. It's almost like building a brick wall around where that trauma has occurred and isolating it. With the inflammation that's happening there, it's pushing a ton of those cells into that area, right? That's what we wanna see happen. We don't wanna have a massive amount so it starts to actually strangle and choke out the things that are in there, but a decent amount of inflammation will let us know that the body is responding well to a tattoo. Things to look out for when you're going through this sealing phase is if you're finding small pockets of blood and exudate drying on top of your tattoo, which means you probably haven't been using enough glide, um, this is gonna seal it off. The body's actually gonna start to not relax, but it's gonna continue along that pathway of uh, healing trauma. And that's something that we don't wanna do in tattooing. We don't want the body to continue. We're actually trying to hold it in stasis and in between some of the first stages of inflammation for as long as possible. And what that does is it allows the body to start healing that wound almost like it's just one thing <clears throat> rather than having sections of it healing as we're moving throughout. Um, sorry, my kids, I think are screaming at my back here. So I'm gonna finish this section and then stop. Uh, <laughs> It's very important when we start getting to the sealing process that we're gonna keep the body relatively open. And this is why we have like a septic technique when we're doing our tattoos. We're not sharing needles, we're not doing it in a dirty space. Is because since the body has been open, almost in like a surgical setting, we're trying to reduce the chances of anything getting into it. And if we do that, the body should react better to a massive amount of new foreign particles being put into it that it has to accommodate, identify, and allow to stay in there. And we'll get on to the next step after I go check the back here. All right, the next stage we have in our inflammation is actually gonna be the cleaning phase. And this is where our body is trying to remove any type of foreign pathogens to make sure that everything is good and it won't cause any more harm, right? Now, after the sealing phase, our body should be starting to close everything off. And the platelets that are being sent to the area to heal that wound and seal it off um, are actually also going to signal the start of all of those you know, killer cells coming up and gobbling our, our particles of pigment and any other type of foreign invaders that are being introduced during the procedure. So once this has started to seal off, things you know will start coming up from the body and they'll actually start gobbling up pigment and other stuff that is located um, where the tattoo wound is and they're gonna help make it kind of permanent, right? Now we've, we've thought for a long time that just those macrophages that come up and gobble up the pigments are what make it permanent, but the pigment that we're using is actually gonna be stuck between a, a myriad of cells inside of this space where the tattoo was done. So it's not just the immune cells that are there, but they are extremely important in creating permanence in the tattoo, hence why I'm talking about them right now. And they, they're not gonna come up until the body actually is sealed off the wound, which is where I was going with that. Um, there's no point in starting to try and fight this, this possible war or invasion of things that have come into your body if the wound is still open. It's not saying that it doesn't occur, but it's not gonna occur in earnest. We'll have forward moving things that are going to be identifying and finding things that have been introduced. But once it's sealed, we're not, the body doesn't have to worry about more things coming in. So then it can really start that process of trying to identify and clean out what is there. During that process, depending on how much inflammation has occurred, if we have 
a lot of inflammation. The body is very, very swollen. There's gonna be extra fluid in and around and between those cells, which may increase may increase the transport of some of those pigments back into the body and increase aggregations of those pigments in the lymph nodes. And that's something that we need to worry about because, as we know, you can have uh, systemic effects from tattoo pigments being deposited in your, your lymph nodes, like red reaction that becomes something that affects your whole body for the rest of your life. So keeping those inflammation uh, markers, any, any of the visual things that we can see down to a minimum is gonna be really important when we're doing a tattoo. So this is the first three stages that we're normally gonna be worrying about with tattooing. So it's a very brief overview. This is really, really, really complex stuff. So I hope that it is making sense somehow right now. Next part of this, I'm gonna to talk to you about like what to look for when we're doing tattoos to see if you have gone too far or if you can continue to push the body. All right, last part of this short video on uh, wound, swelling, understanding, skin stress, and tattooing. We're gonna get into actually what to look for when you're, when you're doing a tattoo to know if you pushed it too far or not, right? So I just made a simple column, good and bad of things that we need to look for, and I am doing this off the dome, and I haven't had a coffee yet today, so let's see how well this goes. Uh, <laughs> some of the things that we wanna look for and this is, like I'd said before, right? If we're seeing blood, like actual blood collections, that's bad, right? Good is gonna be exudate on the opposite side. We have a clearish kind of amberish liquid coming up and pooling on top of the skin. That's totally fine and it's, it's, it's to be expected, right? We, if we see blood, normally the rule of thumb is you see blood, you stop. So if you start a tattoo and you're going over it and everything seems fine and you're seeing exudate and you've got perfect technique and everything is happy, three and a half, four hours in, you start seeing blood start to erupt from the skin, you know that the body has gotten to a point where it has been stressed enough and you need to stop. Now you can continue pushing it if you want to, but when you actively see blood constantly seeping out, the skin has literally had enough. What happens if you continue to push this? delayed in healing, right? It's gonna take much longer to heal and there are greater chances of scarring occurring because you have pushed damaged tissue to the point where it is really, really not good. Um, if you do a seven hour sitting and all you ever see is exudate, boss, you've got one of those clients who is a terminator uh, and you can push them as much as you want. Uh, a couple hacks on this, if you're getting blood, you can move it back over if you want to at some times, depending on people's medical history. And there's so much that goes into this. I actually have made a video about uh, numbing creams. I'm gonna put here. Um, but you can use numbing, numbing or different agents. Uh, diff, we'll do that, agents. Um, to try and suppress some of the body's reaction to that, that wound that you're creating. Um, we've used NSAIDs before for people who are going to be coming uh, across for long trips. They need to get as much done as possible, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, it's OTC stuff, right? You have Advil, leave, things like that. Things that don't contain caffeine are really good. Um, but you need to make sure you have a good medical on this and always get a doctor's clearance, especially if you do not know how to do this stuff. <laughs> Better than assuming that you know everything, pretend that you know nothing, get a doctor's approval because they have malpractice insurance and you do not as a tattooer. If you do, that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> next thing is to see if we see something that's bad is we see massive swelling initially <clears throat> or at any point in time through the tattoo, right? Massive swelling is bad. And what do we mean by massive swelling? If you see the skin actually start to pucker up, right? So there's two stages here that we can see. Initial swelling may be relatively, it'll just be kind of like consistent, right? We're gonna see a little bit of swelling. If we're seeing the skin pucker, the pores open up, it looks uneven. The inflammation is radiating out around it. We see lots of redness, things like that. That is gonna be bad at levels of inflammation that we don't wanna work with, right? The skin is going to be experiencing some type of swelling that is gonna be modulating exactly how far between you know our needles may actually be going in each section which is going to create inconsistencies with the pigment application into the body which will increase the chances of it aging not well too much all right um so massive swelling is not good and usually what we're going to see is initially if people have a tattoo it's just going to be mild swelling which is totally fine right um if you have a uh 
a client who has dermatographia, if they have eczema, psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, or they have other skin conditions that may lend to a uh, hyperinflamed state, being aware of that is good. You can still deal with some massive swelling with people with those types of conditions, but when you're seeing blood come out of it, you really, really need to stop because you can trigger additional events happening after the tattoo or even severe reactions to the pigment when normally they wouldn't normally have it. Stuff happens. Um, Last one that we're going to do with this, and this is just very simple for everyone, right? If you see splitting of the skin, and this will happen with people who are relatively new, and I, I think a lot of tattooers who've been tattooing more than 10, 15 years, you know this, you've seen it, right? If you see splitting and hatching of the skin, especially when using a flat or a mag, the skin is swollen to a point and you're using poor technique and you need to stop doing what you're doing right then. Okay, the good stuff is seeing just not that. <laughs> That's a danger zone that we do not want to go down. You'll see as you have a stretch, the skin is already going to be swollen so much as soon as you're stretching it, you're actually overstretching the epidermis on the top and you go to do your tight circles, which don't do tight circles. We've got a video about that there too. When you go to do the tight circles or whatever type of technique that you're using and you're seeing actual like chunk lines coming out of it, you are, you're flaying that person at that point and you will start seeing bad things happen. Now, when you get to the point where there's that much swelling, right? There's massive swelling. Sometimes you won't even see blood because it's so swollen, which is really, 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 really scary. So all of these ones in and of themselves independently are enough to give you a pause. If you see a lot of swelling, but you're not seeing blood, still stop, right? You don't need to hit all of these to be like, well, it's a good time to stop now. That's not good. Anyways, I think we actually have a couple more. Uh, the client says stop is a good one too, right? Maybe that's where we should stop today. The client says stop, you need to stop. If they don't say this and they're happy, you're good to go. Now you have to ask your client erroneously and you have to have a, a good enough um, relationship with them for them to be able to trust you and say what's happening honestly. <laughs> The client has to know enough about themselves to know when to say no as well. So if somebody who doesn't have a lot of tattoos, normally when they say stop, they either mean it or they've already gone too far, right? Regardless, when people have like a ton of work, they know what's happening with their body. They know when to say no. They have enough experience healing stuff that they're probably gonna be more prone to speaking up. But if you're like, you know, working with a lot of people who only have maybe one to five tattoos, they may try to push themselves far further than they normally, like a normally experienced person would. So you have to develop that, that ability to communicate with them well and to ask them questions like, are you trying to push through this right now because you don't want to come back? And if they're like, yeah, I really don't want to come back, you got to tell them tough because the potential negatives from, that occur from overworking the skin are going to be far greater than if you just tell them like, I don't care, I'm a professional, you need to come back, sorry this is going to cost more, maybe we'll be in a better position next time. That's it. So, these are some of the things you need to look out for. This is what happens with it. Hopefully you like this new, more in-depth breakdown of things. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna go past inflammation. We're gonna get to the proliferation stage, which is so much fun. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Hit the bell. I don't know what the hell that means. Um, and <laughs> if you want to, you can become a member of the, the actual show here on YouTube. Get over to a membership thing. It's a buck a month. We don't give you anything, but as soon as I get five members, I'm going to start reading out everyone's name once a month and say thank you, because that's about all I can do. I don't have anything else. Anyways, thanks everyone. Uh, it's Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.